Factorizing. Factorizing is the reverse of expanding. It's using the distributive law and basically instead of removing the back brackets, with, which we do with expanding, we're putting the brackets back in. When you factorize, your steps are first check for a common factor. And of course, if we find a common factor to all the terms, we factorize it out. So we'll just do the first two. Negative 3x minus 12. Always remember that if your first term is a negative, you will be factorizing out a negative highest common factor. The HCF here is negative 3. So negative 3 out the front of the brackets. And then you're dividing each term by the highest common factor and putting the remaining factors in here. So negative 3 times x, or negative 3x divided by negative 3 just leaves me with x. Negative 12 divided by negative 3 leaves me with positive 4. That's factorized. It is a good idea to check what you're left with, to check that you can't factorize that further. In these cases, we can't. Later on, we'll get to the stage where you can. Looking for the HCF, 10 goes into both of the coefficients. A goes into both. So my HCF will be 10A with a remaining factor of 2A and positive 3. Remember, as a separate part of your working, so not part of the answer, you can do a quiet little check by expanding that back out. 10a times 2a is 20a squared, 10a times 3 is plus 30a. As long as you get back when you expand to the original question, then you did the right thing. Sorry, a little bit small there. Check by expanding back. That is not a part of your solution but it means that you're sure you got the right answer. It's always a good idea too to double check that there isn't a common factor here because for example if I looked at this and decided that my HCF was 5 or 5a I'd be looking to make sure there's no extra a's a and a no highest common factor there. Now we get a little bit trickier here um, it doesn't look at first glance as if there's a common factor, but look, this is 2 times x plus 1 minus a outside of x plus 1. The HCF here is x plus 1. I think I said plus all every time. So we take our highest common factor out the front, and that just happens to be in brackets. And then in brackets, so look here, we took the highest common factor out the front, and then in brackets we put the remaining factors. So in brackets, the remaining factor here is 2, the remaining factor here is negative a, and this is actually sort of an intermediary step, or an intermediate step, when we start being asked to factorize an expression that's going to work out as a binomial, getting the same factor in brackets on the first half and the second half is a strategy that we'll use. But for now, we just want to recognize that when I've got the same factor in brackets in the two terms, that that will be our highest common factor. And here. Now, at first glance, this doesn't appear to have any highest common factors, or any common factors, and so you'd think, I can't do it. But we're having to factorize a lot of different things. After you've checked for a common factor, check for difference of perfect squares or grouping in pairs. I'm not sure whether I'll get to grouping in pairs today. If it's a difference of perfect squares, then the things that would be leaping out at you is two terms 
with a minus in between. If we're going to be grouping in pairs, we'd be expecting to see four terms. I hope you remember that terms are like the words of an algebraic sentence and they're separated by pluses and minuses and held together by time signs. Um, or brackets. So this is a term, this is a term, for example. Just thought I'd better mention that. So, because we know that a difference of perfect squares ends up as two squares, and it's the difference of them, the subtraction, we can recognize that because I've got a square minus a square, that this is a difference of perfect squares. And to factorize it, You'll take the square root of the first term and start the brackets with it. You'll take the square root of the second term, and that will be the second term in your brackets. And it's a difference of perfect squares. One sign will be positive, one will be negative. So you must be able to recognize the result of a difference of perfect squares and the shortcut to factorize it back. There's some harder difference of perfect squares questions you might have to tackle. So we always check for a common factor first before you do anything else. No common factor? Okay. There's two terms and a minus. I have to think difference of perfect squares. So 9a squared is the same as 3a all squared. 9 is 3 squared, a squared obviously. The same here. This is the same as 2b all squared. We're using our index laws. There was an extra line of reasoning in there if you wanted, which is 3 squared a squared minus 2 squared b squared, if you prefer. I don't think it's very necessary. And then we recognize this is a difference of perfect squares. Pop our two brackets in. The square root of the first term, well the first term is 3a squared, so the square root is just 3a. The square root of the second term, 2b. And one of them will be plus and one will be minus. Again, you can expand that back and see if you simplify down to this, and if you do, you've got the right answer. Next one. Always check for a highest common factor. 12 goes into both of these. Factorize it out first. 12 outside of y squared minus 1452 divided by 12 is 121. And now, as you see from my notes, first you check for a common factor, then check if there's anything else you can do. Because in here, that's a difference of perfect squares. So you keep your 12 out the front, and then factorize your difference of perfect squares. Square root of the first one, Square root of the second one, plus and minus. This is also a difference of perfect squares, because this is a square, difference, this is a square. So, we have, if we want to rewrite this as a square, x plus 3 squared minus 2 squared. Now we have to put the first term at the start of the brackets. And we might want larger brackets for this because our first term, or the square root of our first term, is x plus 3 plus and minus. The square root of our second term is 2. And you can simplify this. x plus 3 plus 2, that's x plus 5 and x plus 1. So we've got, we have to be on the alert for difference of perfect squares. Can close my bracket there. We can be asked to factorize difference of perfect squares using thirds. This is a square. This is not obviously a square. But 
if I wrote this as the square root of 10 squared, that would be perfectly correct. The square root of 10 squared is 10. So this, this, so the square root of 10 is the square root of 10, obviously. And all I need to be able to do to factorize a difference of perfect squares is to put the square root of each term in the brackets. And so we'll end up with the square root of 10 as the second term in each brackets. 1 is plus, 1 is minus. So that's using thirds to factorize a difference of perfect squares. And we'll look at factorizing by grouping in the next video.